We're on the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, and I'm pleased to be joined by Iowa Senator Joni Ernst. Senator, thank you so much for taking the time to visit with us this morning. Of course, Dustin. Thank you. I know one thing that has been going on for several months is the the war over between Russia and Ukraine, or let's just call it an invasion. Uh, and obviously, U.S. is among many countries that's trying to get help over to the Ukrainian people. But we're running into some uh, bureaucratic red tape, as it was, just trying to offer assistance. Can you tell us about that situation? Yes, unfortunately, there will be a, a lot of need for food in the countries that typically receive their food, their commodities from Ukraine. Uh, primarily, of course, Ukraine is being hit because of the Russian invasion, but that in turn has created this domino effect because Ukraine is literally Europe's breadbasket as well as uh, they, they send their goods into the Middle East and Africa and those areas typically uh, are subject to hunger and starvation anyway. Well, with decreased production in Ukraine because of the invasion, there are many countries worldwide now that will be suffering from hunger. So what we as Americans try to do then is sell our commodities and, and get them overseas into some of those areas. And we are running into some red tape because currently anything that's considered U.S. food aid when it is being shipped overseas, it's required by law that 50 percent of those cargo ships are what we call American flagged or owned by Americans, operated by Americans. And currently worldwide, there are only four U.S. flagged cargo ships that meet the specifications of the law. There are over 12,000 cargo ships around the world that meet the definition of the law. So we're trying to cut through that red tape and allow more ships to engage um, even though we only have four U.S. cargo ships. If we can speed up the process, we could get food into Europe, into the Middle East, and into Africa. But right now, the red tape is getting in the way, and we're simply not able to move those goods unless we modify this current existing law and uh, get a waiver, a very narrow waiver, just for this situation. Now, I know you've got a bipartisan effort working right now in Congress. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what kind of support you're seeing for that? Yes, it is a bipartisan measure. And uh, Senator Chris Coons of Delaware is my lead Democrat on this bill. We have a lot of support coming from some of the, the major leadership within the Senate. Um, so we're supported by both Republicans and Democrats. And then we also are being supported, of course, by a number of our commodity groups across the state of Iowa, across the Midwest. They also believe that this is the right thing to do to help us move uh, these goods overseas and get there as quickly as possible. Now, if I understand correctly, because I did a little research on this, obviously Congress has the authority to, to cut through this red tape, but it also is something that could have come from the Oval Office or even the Secretary of Defense. Is there any word or reason that you've heard as to why that hasn't happened and Congress has to take the bull by the horns? You know, this is so frustrating because we want Ukraine to win and we want them to win quickly. And you are absolutely correct, Dustin, that the president and the Secretary of Defense have the authority to waive this particular rule, and yet they have chosen not to do it. Um, so uh, one reason that has been brought to us um, that possibly could be part of their decision making is that, of course, the unions in the United States control those, those ships. Um, they're manned by union workers. And so there would be pushback because they would feel that union jobs here in the United States might be at risk if we're allowing other foreign nations to carry our goods overseas. But fact of the matter is that the goods need to get overseas to the people that are starving. It is imperative that we do this. And when those four ships, and those four ships actually are engaged elsewhere. Um, they're already under contract with other private industry, so we can't even use them. So bottom line right now, there, there is no food aid in the form of commodities moving to Europe, the Middle East or Africa through this program 
because those ships are already making money on other projects, they're, they're too busy. And uh, so that's one of the reasons this is imperative, we get it done. So I'm, I'm sorry if the unions feel they're being slighted, but bottom line, American farmers want to move their goods. This is one way that we can do it. We can get it over into other nations and help alleviate some of the world hunger that's going to exist because of the Russia invasion in Ukraine. So what kind of uh, prospects has the legislation got? I mean, what's your next step forward? What, where are things at there to keep that moving and let Congress make the decision? Well, we are hopeful. Again, it is a bipartisan piece of legislation. We've even got Senator Mitch McConnell on the bill. He is our Senate minority leader. We've got a lot of other heavy hitters as well that have signed on to this, just understanding um, how imperative it is to move these goods, um, help backfill for what is being lost in Ukraine. And so we're hopeful that it will move. We need the same effort in the House, though. Um, so we'll continue pressing them, hope that we can get this bill done. Otherwise, those commodities are just going to sit. They are not going to go anywhere. And you know, it's, it's great when we can move Iowa corn, Iowa soybeans, and, uh, you know, we're going to keep pressing. We think it's the right thing to do. And we're getting a lot of support in the Senate. I believe you've been over to the region, haven't you, to see what's going on over there? I have. I did lead a congressional delegation to Poland and to Germany. And those two countries are really, really stepping up. Um, when it comes to the Russian invasion in Ukraine. So a lot of folks have, have called the office. They're very concerned. They're like, why are we the only ones that are doing anything? And I just want to assure everyone that this is an all, you know, all hands on deck effort with Europe. Um, those nations are contributing a lot uh, to the war effort, to the humanitarian relief. Uh, the country of Poland in particular, I want to give a shout out to them because of the millions literally millions of Ukrainian refugees that are pouring into the country of Poland. They are actually housing uh, Pol uh, those Ukrainian refugees in their own homes. They have families that are driving to the border. They're registering their family. They are picking up Ukrainians, taking them to their apartments or homes and allowing them to reside with them. Uh, many others are going to Germany, into the UK and other places, Moldova, others. Um, the Poles even allow the Ukrainians to sign up onto their social welfare program so that they do have subsistence and dollars coming, well, Pol you know, Polish dollars uh, moving into their their pocketbooks um, so they can live. Uh, so there is a lot that's going on in Europe. A lot of these nations really have stepped up. Um, we are providing arms and humanitarian aid, just as I've said, with the food aid that we hope to get over to Europe. So it's, a, again, an all-hands-on-deck effort. Uh, it is devastating to see the number of Ukrainians that have had to flee their homes because of the brutality of the Russians, the indiscriminate bombings um, and killings that are happening. So, uh, yes, uh, we have had a number of members that have actually gone into Ukraine and we will continue showing a presence in Europe and Ukraine continuing to praise our allies for stepping up and doing so much and we'll continue contributing with proper oversight as always when we are contributing to that effort. All right. Well, Senator, thanks so much for taking the time to give us an update on both those topics. And uh, I'm sure we'll be uh, talking to you more about these in the future. And uh, again, thanks so much for your time. Yes, of course. Anytime, Dustin. Thank you. And that was Iowa Senator Joni Ernst here on the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network.